All right, hello, and welcome to Agles of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? Hopefully you're having a good Friday. Uh, we're going to do a whip and chat here with Craft of Lees, Midnight Warrior, 20 inches by 28 inches, round drill, uh, by Sarah Berea. Hopefully I'm saying that name right. Uh, 62 colors, including two ABs and two rhinestones. AB stands for Aurora, Aurora Borealis. Holy cow, I have to break that time down every time I say it. And they're an iridescent coated type of drill. The sparkle is a little brighter than that of uh, regular drills. All right, here's the kind of sticker sheet that I've been following. So for craftably, their rhinestones are LZ or LZ. And then A, B, yeah, it's just their A, Bs. So this is my first time working on a craft of blue, so I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. So A, Bs have that iridescent coating. And then rhinestones have the silver bottom and they're see-through on the top. Can I translucent? So yeah. <laughs> I had seen one of the canvases that of an unboxing for like a sneak peek for the Black Friday on DAC. I was tempted to get it, but I was like Nah, not now. <laughs> yeah, really cool. It had Glow-in-the-dark drills. I've never worked with glow-in-the-dark drills, but yeah, you know, there's another one with a boat and a dock. Yeah, and there's like an ocean or something. It was like a seaside village or something. Really cool. I just looked on the Diamond Art Club website. Not, I didn't get anything though. <laughs> I almost got that wolf and raven, but I just was like, nah, nah, just get off. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> oh well, that nice instead of like a hundred new canvases, which are just varied in style and art. So really cool. I think there's something wrong with like emails going out or something. I heard on social media. Emails got delayed or something. I received emails, but yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Sorry to hear that there were bugs. Sorry that some people had difficulty there. That, that's a bummer. Okay. Well, if you don't get your canvases this time around, I hope they're not all limited edition, because that would just be pretty sad. <laughs> There are a couple of Randall Spanglers in that mix or something, so those are I definitely want to, I'm probably gone already. I've seen a couple get notified. I didn't really do a deep dive, but I've seen canvases that are like around. But yeah. Sorry to hear that anybody had any trouble with DAC's website though. Yeah, it Canvases will come back in stock and all that, but yeah, I know it can be upsetting for some. But yeah, I've had to wait for so many books so little time. Randall Spangler, that was a really popular canvas when it came out. Really beautiful. I've seen it being worked up in whipping chats and all that. But yeah, I, I had to wait a bit, but glad I got it eventually, but yeah. I have to wait for Fine Soft Day 2, the canvas that I worked up here on Echoes of Color. Yeah, uh, previously. Oh, no, before the Harry Potter Hogwarts crest. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so it goes. Hopefully stuff will come back in stock eventually, but yeah, I know, it's like, uh... 
Yeah, happens. Okay, number 26, 815. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet getting uh, hyped up. And then people are asking for refunds because the game's buggy. Yeah, I I've seen that too, but... Yeah, just be happy with uh, the canvases you do have, but yeah, it, it is frustrating, I understand that, but yeah, just try to be patient. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you're just like, eh, this is the time, yeah, really looking forward to this. Yeah, there are different circumstances, but yeah, just try not to be totally devastated. Stuff will come back in stock if they're really popular. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've seen polls for, oh, got these six. Uh, it's just, okay. <laughs> it's like, okay, are they just gonna be turned around and like resold for a ridiculous uh, amount? on a resale site, huh. a resale group on a uh, Facebook or something. That's, that's what I'm imagining sometimes. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, I hope not, but yeah, there you go. I didn't see all 100 canvases, tell you the truth, but sneak previews and see all of them, but yeah, pretty good selection. Pretty good uh, diversity of canvases. Alright, so we're just going to work on this red here. Yeah, I'm like a diamond member for Diamond Art Club, but yeah. I just collect points as they come along, that kind of thing. I've used this site discount, which was listed. They usually have a discount code listed on top of the site. Yeah, and I've used that, and I've used my points to just kind of make a couple of canvas purchases a little easier. But yeah, it can be frustrating <laughs> when you find, find like a unicorn type canvas, like a canvas that you've been after for a while. And it's always magically out of stock. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it sucks. But... Oh well, maybe it was not meant to be at that particular time. Yeah. Oh, just be thankful for what canvases you do have, for sure. There are some canvases that I looked back, like, rummaging through the pile looking for something else, and I was like, I didn't realize I had that one. <laughs> so. Say, oh, yeah, this one. Oh, so cool. <laughs> but, yeah. Yikes. Pretty nippy day out here. There is a bit of wind, so I had to wait a bit before I could get my mail. It was just nippy. Which is fitting for this time of year. Most of the snow has melted at this point. But, yeah, that just makes more room for new snowfall. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if more people start getting sick because of a lot of temperature fluctuations. Yeah. All right. 
All right, this piece of artwork, yeah, those these are fairy wings. I was sent an expert excerpt of a blog post or something from a few years ago that uh, about this artist and about this picture, I, I suppose. It's just randomly posted. Thanks for that. That's pretty cool. Pretty insightful. So, this, yeah. I was kind of wondering if these were fairy wings. They are. Yeah, it's a mixed meaning kind of piece. So, yeah, it has, it has quite a significance to the artist. So, makes it even more enthralling to work on, actually, now. Much more to it than uh, just uh, just for what the picture is. Oh, it's just fantasy themed. Oh, it's really nice. But yeah, it means a lot more to the artist than uh, I originally imagined. <laughs> so it's a cool image, irregardless. Don't get me wrong. So awesome. A lot to be working on. Okay. Where is that? I'm believing that's 720. Alright. There's 16. Just making sure there's not any other like that. At 720. Okay, number 16. Happy Thanksgiving to anybody down in the U.S. Is it Thanksgiving weekend down there now? Yeah. We had our Thanksgiving not too long ago. Yeah, I think it's Thanksgiving down there. There was uh, Macy's Thanksgiving parade with the inflatables. Saw like a Pikachu and Eevee one. Yeah, and there was an older uh, picture of Garfield as a inflatable float. Uh, I guess they're called floats. Yeah. <laughs> It was probably a televised parade, I'd imagine. So, yeah, some of the floats are really cool, though, the inflatables. Yeah, but being up here in Canada, it just get what you find. If you have photos or whatever. Still pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, pop culture characters, and then just in the shape of inflatables. Those must be fun to manufacture. <laughs> Literally just a uh, certain material and big balloons basically and the number of people that have to like hold the ropes to so that they don't go airborne. <laughs> yeah, just uh, quite a few people involved in that I'm sure. Really cool. Am I like even on? Yeah. <laughs> there another triangle. Oh well, sixteen and fifty-two. The symbols. Fifty-two is not shaded in, and sixteen is shaded in. Oh, slightly. Yeah, slightly different triangle though. Okay, it just looks similar. Oh, colors are slightly different, but on the canvas, the symbols, the triangle looks the same. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, that's a different color over here. Totally different symbol. Oh, I figured these symbols were fairly... Uh, 
differential when I was first looking at them, but there's a couple that are similar. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's all good. No oh, big panic, really. Alright, so I'm almost done this section. Yeah, that was a lot of arm. She is really broad arms and shoulder. But, yeah, it worked out. <laughs> Pretty cool. It'll work out in the end. Well, her fairy wings have a lot more color to them, so gonna be refreshing <laughs> to get a little bit more color in this piece, which is coming up when uh, I actually get to the mask. Her hair is blue. Well, I'm mixing colors. Blue and some grays, maybe. Yeah, uh, blues and grays, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, she has a braid coming down across her wings. Yeah, it, it's a party. It's <laughs> a lot going on. A lot of hair. <laughs> she has a very generous amount of hair. Yeah, I kind of got distracted with, like, Facebook <laughs> for a bit there. I was like, I really should be doing a couple of uh, whipping chats here. <laughs> really should be, like, uh, recording diamond painting instead of hanging out on Facebook. Mom's like, yeah, tear yourself off. Come on. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Just keep scrolling in this still stuff. It's like, ah, <laughs> I get stuck sometimes, for sure. Yeah, Pokemon Violet and Scarlet coming out, and yeah, it's buggy, and people are, want refunds. Probably regret that when the game gets patched, but it shouldn't have, the game shouldn't have come out in that way just make buggy messed up games and then just release them when they could have been tweaked a little bit so they wouldn't be so bad when you want a game and then you have to restart because the game starts acting up <laughs> Kind of tedious because I'm sure some people only have a certain amount of time to game in a way, I guess. But yeah, that's gotta be annoying. <laughs> I don't know that uh, Skyrim was bad at one time. Grand Theft Auto, I think, just has glitches on purpose. Like Grand Theft Auto 5, I think it's. I think every game just has a video game has its glitches. But people just get so worked up about it that it's like. It's like, why are you still buying games then? <laughs> see. Okay, go read a book or something if you don't like what you're seeing. I know complete garbage that's like 80 bucks shouldn't be like released on the market but I don't know just <laughs> just want stuff like now like yesterday 
but video game companies kind of have to deal with like being rushed or there's only a certain budget or something it's just Oh, it's basically been like two decades of Pokemon, like two and a half decades of Pokemon, like 25 years, I believe. Yeah, 25 years, yeah. So. I guess I tried playing Leaf Green at, Green at one point, and I must have given it away, but I still have like the box for it. I was back on the Game Boy Advance, I believe. I was like, oh, hey, I have Pokemon Leaf Green. And it's like, no, I don't. <laughs> I just have the box. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Had Venusaur or something in, on the front of it. Some Pokemon. Oh well. <laughs> Co-worker of mine, I was curious about getting uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon because I like have not really touched any of the Pokemon games ever. Been excited that there's like new Pokemon and stuff. Like, it's kind of enjoyed seeing what those portable games had to offer. But yeah, I never went out and got X and Y and all those Pokemon games. I find Pokemon interesting, don't get me wrong, but... Yeah, I think it's like you have to spend a bit of time uh, playing those games to catch your Pokemon and go through the game and have your Pokemon be strong enough for the gyms and stuff in general to get through the game so it's that time thing and what should you be spending your time on and <laughs> what not to be spending your time on yeah I get distracted just with Facebook and Instagram TikTok on the very low end of the line there but yeah it's like oops I generally like seeing the fan art for Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> There's some pretty good drawers out there. Uh, pretty good artists out there. So, I love seeing those. Definitely like and share those kind of posts. I'm still seeing Canada geese. Oh, there's a crow flying around up here. I think they would have gone south already. I think they're confused because the snow is melting, but I would believe that they just have an innate sense to no one to go south or to migrate. Instead of just looking at seeing grass again and it's like, oh, we'll stick around. It's like, I don't know, I could be wrong. They probably instinctively know to go south. Like, it's an innate sense, I guess, but just when? That's probably the confusing part. I don't know, there's probably like a documentary or something about birds, and yeah. <laughs> Their habits and behaviors. I'm pretty sure there's a book or something to... <laughs> Probably some assays or I don't know. Just let the birds do their thing. They should know better, I hope. But it's like a couple of crows are out partying. I haven't seen crows in a while. Like on the property. So just having them time. Yes, another one of those overcast days too. Yeah, it's clouded over. Saw the sun like a few 
a little bit ago, but I think a storm front's moving, or a cold front in general. Always seem to talk about the weather on here. <laughs> I don't know, it's a pretty prevalent uh, thing. <laughs> it's just like out there when you look out the window. Today's weather is, yeah, look out the window. Okay, now back to the main desk. <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, weather forecasts. It, oh, uh, just to get like a general idea. They're just like a part of a news broadcast, weather reports. It's like, what's going to happen is going to happen but uh probably not the way you're saying uh weather person it's like not entirely accurate most of the time but it's at least good to have an idea of what's coming out and going on outside or what could happen but i don't take that for granted <laughs> Taking a weather forecast for as it is, uh, yeah, a little iffy idea there, but it's there. I don't know, there's like weather radar on like websites and all that. Be surprised if Google does, has some sort of weather radar if you search it up, etc. Yeah, but if you, like, know nothing about, like, weather systems or whatever, you're just looking at a radar image with, like, green clouds or whatever. That's rain. <laughs> precipitation. Oh, I can't even say precipitation. Holy cow, I was having trouble with Aurora, Aurora Borealis earlier. I uh, still am. This is fun. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> English not included. <laughs> My word. Dear. Okay. Yeah, just a couple more symbols, literally. This has been quite this action. Just like a saga for this section, but it's a lot of skin <laughs> in this section. For the arm. Oh well, it's all good. All pro the telling the story of the piece. So it's really good. Glad it's done. Still have her face and all that. So this is just like the bottom row. <laughs> all good. Get there. Alright, 19. Alright. Uh yeah, that was 52. Next one. All right, put the plug back in the tray. I always forget to put this plug back in now. <laughs> to this diamond uh, drill tray. Okay, 52. But yeah, you've been watching Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Down below in the description, I put my Facebook profile name. My Echoes of Color Facebook business page. It's really just a website on Facebook, within Facebook. Nothing huge. And my Instagram. All three, I just try to update simultaneously. Like, completed sections. Uh, startup photo of... Uh, each new canvas that I do on the channel, that kind of thing. Yeah, just every once in a while kind of post, not every day. Oh boy, that'd be a really real twist if I was uh, taking progress pictures every day. <laughs> hey, look, I placed two drills today. Ooh. <laughs> it's like, seriously.
<laughs> you're, you're joking, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Look, I'm drinking a cup of coffee. Look at that. Ooh, so exciting. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> it would be funny, but... <laughs> uh, no, I don't do that. Uh, Instagram, okay. And I'm still working on uh, those walking challenges. They're an ongoing thing. I'm almost on the fellowship uh, part of the Lord of the Rings Conqueror Challenge. I bought a bundle virtually walking across Middle Earth to destroy the One Ring. Yeah, uh, the path that Sam and Frodo took. Well, the fellowship for the most part. But yeah, eventually it's Sam and Frodo. So they basically describe it that way. So I have 50 something kilometers left. Of that. And then I go to the Mines Moria. And then uh, Pacer is Silk Road trading routes in Asia that they used way back in the day. 700 BC, I think. Yeah, it's a good chunk across Asia. Just all joined up trading routes. But I have those website links listed in the description below ever since I started the challenges. That's all be an ongoing thing. Those are the main websites and not an affiliate website or anything. I'm not affiliated or partnered with Conqueror or Pacer respectively. So that's just down there for information. Just so you know what I'm talking about with walking challenges or reading on the treadmill, mentioning that kind of stuff. So just there for information, that's all. All right, so take care. All the best. Happy Thanksgiving down there in the U.S. Yeah, sorry to hear about the Diamond Art Club uh, issues. Yeah, just try to be patient, but stuff happens. I know it's frustrating, but anyway, see you again soon. Take care. All the best. Bye.